we're here. Check this thing out. This thing is amazing. It puts fidget spinners to shame. I've never had one of them, but they look really boring. I'm the sort of person that needs to fidget, to, that really needs to muck around with things and play with things. Josh cracked the sad with me when I was at his house because I'm the type of person that when he doesn't know what to do, he just walks around the house. So you'll find me like on your roof, you know, balancing on your veranda beams, just anything to keep my mind occupied. G'day guys, Chris here from Vogus Prospecting. If you're new to the channel, welcome. I hope you're enjoying it. And if you're an old hack, welcome back. Today, I'm in search of bedrock. What I wanna do is go into one of my old holes that was starting to run out of gold in the topsoils and see if I can't expose the bedrock to hopefully find the pay lead. Uh, that's what we're gonna be doing. And we're also gonna be testing a couple of little theories that I've been suggested by my uh, subscribers. Before we get into digging the hole, I'm going to run over some of the theories of my subscribers. Uh, the first one is to do with running a fluid bed sluice. Now, one of my subscribers wrote to me and they said that a fluid bed sluice works best if the high pressure point is right at the head here. The way I've had this set up was setting up so the back of the sluice here was roughly sitting where the high pressure zone is there. Now, my theory was that because the back of it was on that high pressure zone, it would be forcing all that water down and concentrating it on these grizzly bars and then pushing it through. But I stand corrected. What we really want is the high pressure zone here because it has two different channels. It seems to create low pressure just there under those grizzly bars and then it stops rock from going up and over uh, and you have to have a lot of angle on your sluice. So instead we change it so that section there is right on top of this plate and apparently that works better so we're going to give that a shot later on if I have to move some of these rocks which is likely I'm going to try another suggestion from another youtuber who said that if you take hessian bags or, or, or um, sandbags with you you can fill them up with overburden and use them to build your sluice wall when I first said this I thought it was going to be a lot of work but then I realized that it's actually a really ingenious idea it's a really smart idea so thank you to both of you um, we'll, definitely going to test one theory today and we might get around to testing the sandbag theory later on literally surrounded by rocks and can't find the right one <laughs> so the concept of having the high pressure point at the end of the sluice was so you could run at level by running at level your fluid bed or the box in there does two things it keeps everything so you've got more surface area. So I put the rocks down. So it keeps everything flat and level. When you have it on an angle like I had it, obviously the rocks are all going to pack up at the front and eventually that's going to cause a ramp and the ramp will allow gold to come up and out. When it's level, it's got a wall in front of it. So it can't, it will hit the wall and bounce back down. The second thing is the high pressure point is right over the slick plate, right where you want the rocks to come off the end. Uh, this might need some adjustment. Now, what I was doing originally was having that end of the sluice here. So it would have been feeding down here. And it would have been building up speed, but I had to have the angle to get it to clear. So let's just run a bit of a test. Mixed rock, right? So some big ones and some little ones, but not much dirt. Yeah, nice, okay. So that one, that big rock there got wedged on a rock underneath it. We'll try it again. And straight over, try a bigger rock. Oh, he almost made it. That's not bad. That is a hefty sized rock for a river sluice to clear just that easy. The creek I'm working is granite based and the problem with it is that the stones are really jagged. So they get caught up in these grizzlies and if you don't clear them, they bloody hang up all the big rocks. And then you, uh, and then it doesn't process as quickly. And I don't like it.
really big rock that got in my way and stopped me from getting the rest of the dirt. I just moved it. Well, I just I got it unwedged from the clay. So now I've got to try and use or summon some sort of muscle to move it completely out of the way. That has me worried. That, that is a big box. Look at the dirt that it gave me though. All oh, that clay. Oh, that's beautiful. Unlike the last one, I caught this guy in the act. Mr. Leachy mate here decided that he'd try and take a bite out of my ankle. What a jerk. Um, the last one I had was, bit me on this leg and it bled for about 30 straight hours. It was horrible. Get off. There we go. Gone. Leeches aside, I think I might be getting close. My, my shovel feels like it's hitting something that isn't a rock. It feels too big to be a rock. I could definitely be wrong, but I'm hoping it's the bedrock. And I haven't really moved too much dirt. That's not a lot, really. That's probably oh, 30 shovels worth or about, about 10 pans worth of dirt. We still got a little bit of daylight though, so we better keep going. While I wait for that hole to clear, I just wanted to quickly talk to you guys about a couple of cool things that are still going on with my YouTube channel. Uh, you can win yourself a bag of pay dirt. That is being drawn on the 7th of February. There is a link in the description for you to enter that. I will try to send it anywhere in the world. If it gets through customs, that's awesome. We're not 100% sure if it will yet. Uh, the second thing is, Josh's sluice has been named with Tally the Votes, and we now know what it is called. Zoe is currently making up the sticker for it to get spray painted onto the side, maybe even etched if we can be bothered getting the etching machine out <laughs> to put it on there. Uh, that is coming up in a future video, so you'll get to see all of that. My fundraiser starts in March, which is only four weeks away. Now, the fundraiser is going to have two constituents. The first part is a meet and greet. Uh, we're going to have a sausage sizzle and a raffle. The guys from Crop Gold Traps will be there with some uh, gear for you to look at. Uh, you'll get to say hello to me. We'll have a nice chat about prospecting and we'll be raising money for Beyond Blue while we're at it. The second part of it is an online fundraiser. This will be launched with a special video that I am making on the 1st of March. Uh, it is going to be very very full on but it's going to get straight to the point and hopefully it'll help to break the stigma around mental illness and uh, how we as a society deal with it so on that video there will be a link for you to uh, donate to and I hope you can join me in raising funds for Beyond Blue because it will mean the absolute world to me and you could just be part of saving someone's life right it's about there let's go have a look okay we have a big rock just here we have a rock that I am standing on here and I think there's one just there right at the very bottom of the hole the only way I'm gonna know that though is if I get wet and put my whole shirt in to see if I can't get down the bottom let's do it it's a rock it's a big one too and then my sleeve is very wet all right Unfortunately, I am losing filming light because uh, I'm in a valley. The light drops really quick. Let me catch you up to see where I am for part one of this video. So I got the big rock out of the way. Damn that big rock. Uh, and I think that I'm getting closer to bedrock because the clay is getting smoother with less rock, less inclusions in it, which means that uh, the gravel hasn't sunk that far. And normally you find that sort of clay right above the bedrock, but it could be a false bottom. And that's what we want to punch through. No matter how many times I have to come out here, I am going to find the bedrock and I am going to work it. So it might mean that I have to cut cry it clean across the creek. I don't know. We're going to find out in another episode. Let's do the clean out for today. Uh, and then we're going to come back here probably in the morning and keep digging. Hello. 
It looks pretty clean in there. If you do in the field clean outs like I do, always do them back into your hole because it means the next time that you come back and dig it out, if you have dropped anything, it's going to come straight back up on your shovel. Is there any gold? Hey, I see a little bit. I see a little bit, but not much. And it is fine gold, like a little bit of amalgam there too, which is mercury soaked gold. Now, not a lot. And if you've seen the video where I last worked this spot, I'll put a link in the description for you. If you've seen the video uh, where I last worked this spot, I was running out of gold. Now, today was not about trying to find lots of gold. Today was about clearing that layer of dirt off to try and get to the very bottom because if I can get onto the bedrock, there's a really good chance I'll be able to pick up a lead that no one else has picked up in a very long time. I might not even be on top of the lead, which is the other thing. So as we dig down, we're also gonna dig across the creek because I think going across it, eventually, if I take regular test pans, I'm gonna hit exactly where that gold lead is. That was a nice, short, sharp video for you all. I hope that you learned something just like I have today. Um, learning how to use this fluid bed sluice has been an absolute pleasure. And we are slowly discovering what it takes to find the pay streak in a stream. We haven't covered too much of it today, but the principle is that I was finding good gold. I found about 1.2 grams out of this hole in total. Uh, and I want to find where it's coming from. I want to find where that ribbon of gold is coming down the stream for it to pack up here. Once we find it, I think it's going to be a bit of fun. Even if we don't, we're going to get to the bedrock and we're going to see what's down there. There's always a chance that we're going to find nice little pickers, specimens, and I know in this creek, sapphires. <laughs> Remember to get involved in my pay dirt giveaway because that's been drawn in a week's time on the 7th of February. Uh, I'm going to try and ship it anywhere in the world uh, and hopefully it will get to you so you guys can have a chance to pan some of the very gold that I've dug out of the ground. My fundraiser for your Beyond Blue is kicking off on the 1st of March. Stay tuned for that. It's going to be awesome with some really good giveaways uh, from some great sponsors, including the Croc Gold Trap Boys, Gary Two Toes has jumped on board, uh, Willie's Eyewear, and a whole heap of other people besides. So keep an eye out for that. I'm going to keep promoting it. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you've all enjoyed this video. And as always, I hope to catch you out here sometime.